Oh. Hey, Sean, uh, Dave Gorin, would you uh, discuss a little bit how you guys as an offensive line have been able to be so successful despite the fact you really hadn't had a lot of game action together? Uh, yeah, I think um, I think it starts – to be honest, when you first get to campus and, you know, you just – like, I, like we've just been working really hard these past three years, you know, as a unit, like, you know, and I think it's just uh, really, you know, it's just, you know, just trusting each other. We work together. We, we, we stay hard. We work together. You know, we, you know, just – I'm sorry. <laughs> I just got out of the shower. I'm sorry. <laughs> No worries. Want to start again? Yeah, yeah, I'll start again. That was the practice um, one. Do what? That was the practice answer. Yeah, yeah, that was practice. <laughs> um, no, I think, uh, you know, I think what, how, how well we gel together is I think we're, we're just all best friends, to be honest. You know what I mean? And I think that's, that's, what, it, that's what it starts with. Uh, you know, it's kind of uh, cliche to say, but, like, we all love each other. We're all brothers. And – um, I, you know, I, I give my all on Saturdays and I know, I know Jerg, Zach, Tom, Loic, Naya, Jay Beyonce, they all do the same. And I think, you know, we trust each other. We know how hard each one of us works. We're all in the film room together. And, uh, you know, we put the time and work in and on Saturdays, I think we go out there as a unit and we, uh, we know what we're capable of and we know we can execute and yeah. Any, any of you guys live together roommates? Uh, no, we don't, we don't live together, but I mean, with football, we're practically around each other, you know, most of the time, but, uh, yeah. Thank you. Mm. Sean, how much does, uh, Nick have to do with that? You know, the, the beef boys has become a big thing and the gatherings at the house and everything else. How much does the coach have to do with that? Oh, he's got, I mean, he is it, you know what I mean? It starts with him. Uh, you know, he, he sets a standard for us. You know, he sets the bar and he, he treats us like men. You know, he's not, he doesn't babysit us. He, he uh, when you get here, he shows you what you have to do to get better, what, what you have to get it better. He coaches you and, you know, uh, he just, he's just a great leader in the O-line room. Uh, you know, his, his leadership in just, uh, just treating us like men, really, to be honest, you know. How would you characterize his style of leadership? Is he uh, more on the Higgins approach or the Cohen approach? Uh, I would say the Cohen approach. Uh, he's pretty He's pretty serious uh, most of the time. But, uh, I mean, that's the way you want it to be, you know what I mean? Uh, playing the offensive line, if, if you let loose for one rep, uh, you know, that could be a sack or a tackle for loss. So – you know, I, I really appreciate how Coach Tobacco is on. It's 24-7. And come game time, you know, I can, like, I can pretty much I've, – I've, I've got to know his voice so much where I can just hear him from the sideline while, while, while out on the field, you know, because of no crowds. So it's just, you know, his voice is just always lingering in the back of my head, just, uh, you know, telling me what – pretty much just going over the technique stuff. So – Thank you. Sean, after, after two bye weeks and a uh, mismatch against Campbell, what did you guys kind of learn about yourselves in the, in the win over Virginia? Uh, I think what, what we learned the most is, you know, we can compete against these, these, these uh, I would say Virginia is a top tier team in the ACC. You know, they competed for the AC, ACC championship last year. I know they lost a few guys, but uh that was, they, I mean, they were no joke. They were a good football team. And I think what we, what we come out of that is, uh, you know, we belong. Um, I think at the beginning of the season, we saw those ACC standings, those projections, you know, that kind of put a chip on our shoulder. And uh, it's just, you know, one week mentality, you know, Campbell's take, take care of Campbell and then focus on Virginia. And now 24 hour rule celebrate Virginia, but now we're, you know, moved on and we have big game this week. We're just, you know, we're here and we're going to prove it that we uh, deserve all these teams' respects. respect. There were a few drives Saturday that kind of got uh, a little bit off schedule. 
uh, from a down and distance perspective. What's what needs to happen to prevent that from happening this Saturday? Uh, yeah, I think uh, how to get rid of those MAs and uh, just not being yourself. I think that just starts with uh, just really, um, just really, I, I guess, just having the confidence going out there and just when you hear the the snap count or uh, like what your assignment is, just knowing like, hey, I know what to do. Uh, just kind of calm yourself before the snap, I guess. You know what I mean? Uh, I think that we, we definitely have to work on that this weekend with uh, cadence because their D-line gets off the ball. So that's a big that's a big thing we're working this weekend is uh, making sure, you know, everyone is not going to have those uh, missed assignments. Sean, did you – last year when – after you guys played Virginia Tech, the uh, – that would have been the last game against Virginia Tech for like six years. So when the schedule came out, was there a little bit of excitement that you guys get another shot at them so quickly? Uh, yeah, I would say so. I mean, last year for sure, uh, I felt like – well, I, I think we, we we felt like as a unit um, we could have executed better for sure. Uh, so I think for sure uh, – and pretty much the whole defense is back pretty much. So, yeah, we're looking at it as, you know – uh, last year was, you know, not a fluke, but we're, you know, we, we've been working on it. We, kn we know what we need to fix. And I think we feel really confident if we go in there and just execute and, you know, not have missed assignments, you know, we can, uh, we can win this game. So. The thing I remember about last year's game was just it's really the first time I thought all year that you guys got out physical. You know, if that's, mm -hmm. that's probably not a word, but. But you know what I'm saying? Like, did, yeah. did you guys feel that way too? Uh, I think, to be honest, last year, what our issue was is um, it was loud. Like, I, I know, um, I mean, Zach Tom could barely hear the clap. You know what I mean? If your center can barely hear the clap, the, the rest of the offensive line is going to be laid off the ball. So I think that was a huge advantage for Virginia Tech last year was uh, just that atmosphere. So I think this year um, – you know, we're like, we have the, I guess the home field advantage, but you know, there's not gonna be noise for us, which is a huge advantage. So I think this year, if you know, we're working on it, we all get off the ball at the same time. That can, uh, that'll really like even out the playing field. Cause I don't, I don't think they can out phys I mean, they're, they're, they're a tough team and they're physical, but I think we're just as physical. So, you know what I mean? I don't think they have the advantage in that. Yeah. I wish I had noticed this on Saturday. Have you guys since 2,200 fans are allowed in the stadium. Can you guys – do you still have the artificial noise that goes with that, or is it just now the, the 2,000 people making noise? Uh, I'm not sure with that. Honestly, I can't really – I don't really notice. I know it's not, you know, loud. Like, I can still hear everything. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really know, to be honest. But I, it's, not, it's not too loud out there, so. John, you mentioned the confidence that you guys have to have in executing your offense. Would you say that your confidence grew some by your performance uh, against Virginia as offense? Uh, I would think so, for sure. Um, I mean, this season, fall camp, we, know, we knew what we were capable of. Like, you know, we, we knew the talent we had on this team. It was just if we could, you know, uh, go to a game focused with the game plan and being able to execute. And I think uh, – with Virginia that does, you know, give us some confidence that uh, if you have the game plan down right to where like everyone's on the same page, everyone's uh, doing what they're supposed to do each play, this offense can uh, produce a lot of explosive plays. And I think that showed on Saturday. And I think we're just excited to uh, adjust to a new defense and um, be able to make more plays on Saturday. You guys had a week to prepare for Virginia. How do you do that with, you know, a shorter pre preparation time uh, for Virginia Tech? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, this season has been weird with the uh, surprise bye weeks for sure. But, uh, I mean, it's just like any other year, like last year. You just have a week to prepare for another team. So, I mean, this is nothing really new to us. So, we know what to expect. Uh, get the base plan down on Tuesday. And I think really what it is is um, you just got to watch – you just got to watch film – more you know what I mean you don't have more days to you know watch film over time you gotta you gotta get the base plan down today and then tomorrow's third down and then the next day is situation so I think what it is now is just uh not cramming it but just staying on top of what you need to get done 
film wise and knowing the game plan. You also mentioned that chip on your shoulder. How big is that chip that you guys as a team feel like you, you know, you have? Uh, I think it's pretty big, you know, um, speaking for myself, I was a two-star recruit, you know, none of these other ACC schools even looked at me. So I think going, and I think that's the rest for the rest of these guys too, is every time we play one of these ACC schools, our mindset is they don't respect us. You know what I mean? They think we're just little old Wake Forest and they think we're going to roll over and, you know, we come out there with that mindset that, you know, we're Deacon tough and we're going to bring it to you. And, you know, it's going to be a four quarter battle. So that's what we want every single, every single game. So. And Sean, what are the keys to being successful on Saturday against that Virginia tech defense? Uh, yeah, I think the key is uh, just executing, you know, um, Last year, we missed on a few plays, but uh, this year, just execute, uh, just, you know, uh, perfect technique, really. And, um, yeah, just taking advantage of these practices and just knowing the game plan. And, yeah, I think we'll be ready. Anything else for Sean? All right, thanks, guys. Thank you. What's up, Bug? What's up? How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Um, all right, so last year, the, the game against Virginia Tech ends. How sure were you at that point that that was the last time you were going to play Virginia Tech in your weight career? Uh, I'm pretty sure it, it might have been the last time just because of how everything planned out. But this year, when COVID happened, a new schedule came out, you know, got kind of excited. You know, I'm like right down the road from them. So it was another another opportunity to showcase my talent against the home team. Yeah, I mean that's what I was gonna say when the when the new schedule came out and there they are. You know, Wake wasn't gonna play them for another like six years. And then they're right there. That that brought some excitement for you. Yeah, you know, kind of just you know licking my chops. You know, kind of hopefully hopefully to get back at it from last year. You know, we left a lot of plays out there, a lot of mistakes that we that we cleaned up. So it should be it should be a great game Saturday. Speaking of cleaning up mistakes, did you feel like the, the game on Saturday was cleaning up a lot of mistakes from, from the first two ACC games? I know Campbell kind of offered a chance to do that. but Yeah. I would say Saturday was a great opportunity, though, for us to uh, clean up a lot of stuff. You know, miscommunications, we cleaned up a lot of that. Uh, alignment issues, that was a big a big problem the first two ACC games. And we cleaned that up a lot, I'll say, against Virginia. So it was just kind of just keeping the same momentum uh, through the rest of this ACC schedule. Correct me if I'm wrong, but there was a stretch there in the first half where you weren't on the field very often. Maybe it was like third down packages only. Did that kind of save you for the fourth quarter, and, and that's why you were fresh out there in the third and fourth? No, it was more of a, you know, just getting a couple couple guys, a uh, couple reps. You know, that was Rondell's first game. So kind of get him back into the groove. So that helped me. That helped me a lot, you know, just being fresh for the second half. Boogie, Virginia Tech has had some changes at quarterback, but Khalil Mack has been really consistent as one of their backs. How do you guys go about stopping someone like that who is putting up the numbers that he's having game in and game out? Uh, you know, just for us, just keeping our eyes on our guys, you know, watching film. Uh, a lot of teams, you know, have their eyes in the wrong places. And with anybody, your eyes are wrong, you make a big play. So for us, it's just keeping our eyes on the uh, right target, you know, we got guys filling in gaps. That's uh, most gaps are on field, so uh, that's kind of uh, the game plan. Boogie, what's the game? Go ahead, Les. Good. Sorry, Brett. Boogie, what's the key for you guys this week? You're obviously going to be facing one of the better offensive lines in the ACC. What do you need to do to be able to attack them uh, consistently through the game? Uh, you know, watching some some teams. You know, some teams on the you know they run a stretch a lot. Some teams are running side to side. So then we can kind of take a different route to it, you know, bring something new. So I feel like what we're doing is going to be a great opportunity for us. Boogie, well, after the game Saturday, Coach said that uh, this week of practice is going to be a lot better at two and two than it would have felt at one and three. How big a deal was winning that game, you know, looking long term and how much different 
do you feel like this week's practice has been so far because of that? I feel like winning that game was, you know, a big confidence boost. You know, uh, going as going as Campbell, they're a good team, but you know, we're kind of supposed to beat them. So getting our first ACC win, just all across the board, was a big confidence boost for us. You know, going into practice, we had two weeks to prepare for Virginia, so that was another plus. But this week, you know, we kind of a shorter time frame, so we, there's a lot more guys going to be investing into it. Can you can you see a difference, kind of a more pep in the step of guys because of that win? They're a little bit different attitude. Yeah, yeah, I feel like today practice was uh, very up tempo, up speed. You know, wasn't really too many coaching going on because you know we were doing the right thing. So it was more of just us dialing dialing in for this week. Thanks a lot. Good luck this week. Thank you, Boogie. Coach Hemp Hill has been you know very complimentary of Nick Anderson. The performance he had against Virginia and then Kalen's performance as well. What was what does that do for those guys, and what does that do for your secondary that those freshmen stepped up the way they did? So for us, you know, it's it's great, you know, seeing younger guys, you know, Nick being a walk on, just seeing him going out there making plays left and right, you know, it's good for him, also good for us, but also you know, good for the guys they're playing behind, you know, they're playing good, so that takes the stress off of them a little bit, you know, get them a couple breaks here and there, and it's also great for the team, you know, and you know, when somebody makes a big play, everybody's happy for him, you know, some people feed off of that. So I felt like when Kalen got his pick, you know, that was like everybody was surrounding him. So that's kind of like great for him. And when Nick, he's making tackles left and right. The defense were all surrounding him. So I feel like that's just a great atmosphere for younger guys. As a veteran of that defense, you mentioned that confidence boost already. How do you kind of keep the guys – do you have to? Do you, you feel it throughout the whole team? Or do you kind of have to kind of keep the guys going in that right direction? Uh, I feel like I feel like it's just – I feel like everybody knows uh, when things are happening, you know, it's – you know, you see somebody make a play, you know, you want to be that person. So you're just going to feed off of that and just keep going and going. It's like a chain game, you know, it's a chain reaction. So it's more of just more guys making more plays, you know, you trying to make plays. So you see somebody else eating, you're going to want to eat too more. That's how it goes. Well, have you had to remind yourself that Nick was a walk-on because of the way he plays sometimes? I mean, yeah, some, sometimes in practice I'll be like, oh, I forgot he's a walk-on, but – I don't really see no difference in him. You know, he works just as hard as anybody else. We weren't out there at fall camp. Like, was was his ascension in fall camp and in the summer, was it immediate or was it just something where he kind of just kept coming on and, and kept being there? I know it's for me, well, the first first walkthrough we had, you know, Nick was very into, you know, making calls, being confident in making his calls. So I felt like that was a big step for him. And then going into fall camp, Coming to wearing pads, you know, he's coming downhill, fitting up the hole, not being scared. You know, that was a that was a big thing. You know, him coming and going against Clemson, he's down there making plays. So that's just like I forget he's a walk on sometimes. He was uh he was pretty emotional running around, pumping his fist after some plays. Is there ever a point where you as an older guy want to say, Hey young fella, watch out because that other team's watching you do this too and uh and they're paying attention, maybe calm it down a little. Uh no, nah, you know, it's it's like uh, that's like that's just him, you know. He's like he's he's a very energetic person, you know. Out there in the field, you don't want to kill somebody's vibe. You see him making plays, he's fist pumping, you know. I'm out there fist pumping with him. I'm like, let's go. You did it, you did it this time, let's do it again, let's just keep it going. Speaking of fist pumping and like uh displays of emotion. What was that weird, like, fumble that wasn't a fumble where, like, both teams were on the field almost like a dance-off? What was going on there, Boogie? Uh, you know, just both teams, you know, just, you know, nobody really knew what the play was. You know, of course, we thought it was our ball. We thought it was our ball. So, more of, you know, just showing emotions, you know, both teams just being passionate about what's going on on the field. Okay, but was the ball out? Uh, yeah, the ball was out. I would say the ball was out. You know, some pictures of release where you can see Quez knocking the ball out and he's not even down yet. But, you know, he passes in the past. So you guys should be plus nine on the season in turnovers instead of plus eight. Yeah, plus nine, yeah. Okay, I got Would one you... more question about their offensive line. They're probably the biggest O-line in the, uh, in the conference. Is there anything about size that makes you approach your job any differently? No, nah, not really. You know, I'm a – I'm a big person, so, you know, size is really really doing anything to me, you know, going across the line. I feel like our defensive line, we have a different demeanor. You know, size doesn't mean anything. You know, we're all hard hitters, you know, play hard, tough. So, I feel like the size doesn't really come into it.
Yeah, but you're fast too, Boogie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, you know, just, you know, being fast and big is a plus for me. So, you know, size, another bigger offensive line doesn't really have anything to do with it. Do you ever go back and see that article where the guy said you were the number two freak in uh, college football? Uh, no, I ain't seen that since uh, it first came out. Okay, all right. Boogie, were you a little surprised that uh, Bronco Mendenhall earlier last week indicated that he really didn't know all that much about you? Uh, when I seen it, I was like, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to show him. He he, know, he knows why now, who I am now after the game. That was my mentality for it. The same mentality now. Look, I feel like I might have asked you this before, but I kind of want to revisit it. Um, one of the things – Coach Cohen and Coach Clawson always talk about with you is, is how special the motor is and you never give up on plays and you have so many backside pursuit tackles. Have you always played like that? Like you've been playing football for a long time now. Is that something you've always done or did somebody have to kind of get into you and get you to play like that? No, it's just something I've always, always been like, even in high school, you know, I wanted to make every play. So if I see the ball outside the field, of course, I'm going to run it down. So it just kind of transferred into college. Is that? Do you think that's just an instinctual thing, or is like I think does it come from playing basketball a little bit? Like, no, nah, I just you know just come from instinct. You know, I'm kind of I'm a greedy person, so I want to make every play. So if I see it's a chance for me to run across the field and make a tackle, I'm going to do it. The play that really stood out there was the the third and eleven screen where you're coming on the twist. I think it's about the third quarter. Just take me through what you're seeing on that play to to let you know that. You know, you gotta you gotta abandon the pass rush and double back and and run down the ball carrier there. Yeah, we work on we work on screen pretty much every day in practice. You know, the coach calls all. You never know where you're gonna get. You never know you're gonna get. You know, we run an interior twist, and you see the guards just let, you know letting us go. So they always tell us just follow the lineman. So I follow the uh, follow the lineman to the right, and that ball happened to be right there. You know, you know, working that drill every day pays off. Boogie, I asked Sean this, but. How big is that chip on your shoulder and the team's shoulder with the ACC preseason predictions and just in general? Uh, in general, you know, we kind of look down upon, you know, just wait for us, you know, people like y'all don't belong, you know, this, that, and the other. So we kind of take that as a kind of like, let's show them, let's show them what we do. You know, even us having the, being the second most winning this team at ACC, you know, we still get no respect. So for us, that's kind of like, let's just keep going. Let's just keep, let's, let's just keep beating it down. Let's just keep it going. That's how we look at it. Anything else for Boogie? All right. Thanks, Boogie. All right. Thanks, Boogie. Yep. Hey Trey, how's it going? Going pretty good. You? Good. Um, you guys played Virginia Tech up there last year. Um, and that was set to be the last time we played Virginia Tech in like six years. So when the revamp schedule came out, was there some excitement for for especially you being so local to Virginia Tech, and then for the whole team to to get another shot at these guys so quickly? Oh, most definitely. Uh, when when we knew we had to play them again, especially both Virginia and Virginia Tech. We knew that uh, we had to come out and just play our heart out because I think last year uh, it kind of slipped away from us, but we just knew that we can't let that happen again. We got to go out and execute our game plan at the highest level and uh, read our keys and be in the right spot. How important was – was Saturday for y'all to get to two and two and not be one and three. And Coach Clawson kind of struck a tone after the game that I really hadn't heard from him since like two years ago in the second half uh, of the season when you guys kept winning games, like the game at NC State and then the win at Louisville. Like that was, that was there's kind of some desperation behind that game, wasn't there? Uh, it was just a, a key game that we had to win. Uh, Coming in knowing that we're two and two instead of one and three is 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 a big thing for us. Uh, plus, it was another our first ACC win of the season, so it it established a little bit of confidence in us that uh, this season is not going to just be given to us. Uh, we're gonna have to go out and fight. It's gonna 
predicted to be a fourth quarter game at all times, especially going against competition like we did against uh, UVA and the next one that we're going into against Virginia Tech. Uh, just having that mindset that uh, we're two and two, we got our first ACC win and uh, we just got to keep building on that, keep uh, getting better each and every week, uh, fix all the things that we need to fix and just prepare and execute. Hey, Trey, Vion. Um, obviously, you held uh, UVA to just three points in the second half, uh, made a, quite a few adjustments, it seems like. What's the key to kind of building off that second half and having that carry over against Virginia Tech Saturday? Uh, just be able to come out and execute whatever adjustments, because uh, that was very key in that game, is making adjustments. And coming into Virginia Tech, you know, uh, they're going to probably have a game plan. They're going to probably have some checks. To what we do, so we got to be able to adjust with the game, adjust with what we're seeing, and uh, execute our game plan and whatever adjustments that we make. Trey, I asked you this uh, at the end of the game about the confidence. Would it, that performance, especially in the second half, what that would do for the defense's confidence moving forward? Have you noticed a difference in the confidence since Saturday? Uh, I I think I do, uh, especially uh, with us in the back end, we had like young guys come out and get some experience, get some playing time, and they actually played pretty good. And uh, having them, having the confidence in them to go out and execute, it takes a little weight off the the older guys or the veteran guys because we now we know that they know what they're doing, they know how to prepare. It's just keeping keeping them consistent because uh, the young guys, they I mean they have their stuff off off the field, schoolwork, just making sure that they're caught up with the game plan, getting up and watching film, standing on them, making sure they're doing everything right so the season isn't too much of a hassle for them. So uh, just staying on the young guys and pretty much getting them up, watching film, because, I mean, next man up mentality when something else goes wrong. So we just having everybody confident in each other, having everybody uh, accountable to each other is uh, great going into next week. You mentioned the young guys. Kalen and Nick had really good games against Virginia. You talked about that helping you guys, the, young, the older guys, knowing that you have confidence in them. What do you think that does for them moving forward just on the field, uh, just the, those performances that they had? Uh, I mean, it's giving them experience. It's, it's allowing them to get on the field and get, get reps, get a good competition. And pretty much they're coming out and they're preparing like an older guy, especially Nick. He's in, in the film room just as much as I am and having them come in and want to get better, want to correct all the mistakes that they do make and keep progressing throughout the weeks. So when it gets late in the season, we have – when we get people back, we have depth. And that was a, a big factor coming into the season is developing depth. And now seeing the Nick and, and them coming in and actually playing and stepping up is, is, is a big thing. You're not the first one to – to be complimentary of Nick's preparation, you sometimes have to remind yourself that he's a true freshman and then he's a walk-on. Uh, I knew he was a true freshman. I didn't even think he was a walk-on. I ain't going to lie. I, th I didn't know he was a walk-on. Okay, well, now that you know that, I mean, he's out there. He's got nine tackles. You know, I think the Clemson game, like the third play of the game, he subs in on a third down package. Like, this isn't really normal stuff for a true freshman walk-on, is it? I mean, it's not, but at the same time, I'm a, I'm gonna treat him like any other guy on the on the defense. I mean, if you gonna be a star and you gonna come out and play, we, I'm gonna hold you accountable just like I do everybody else, regardless of what your your year is. Uh, you just gotta come out, execute, prepare like you're a veteran, and just be ready when your number is called. That's a that's a respect factor that has to be earned. Is that earned over the summer and in fall camp? Uh. Pretty much uh, having over the like fall camp and then coming in early on in the season. I mean, seeing seeing the potential in those guys, uh, it's kind of a good thing because, like I said, we want to develop depth and having them show a little glimpse of potential that they can make these plays, they can be uh, held accountable. Uh, was a good side coming in, and now we're actually seeing it that they're actually ready to play. You've been around for a while now, Redshirt Senior. Do you ever look at those young guys and say, man, I wonder what I was like back when I was a freshman all those years ago? 
and and what uh, what was going through your head and what the coaches were thinking about you back then? Uh, I have been here for for a long time, and I do think back to those days, and I just I just want to tell them just all the all the knowledge that I've accumulated over the years, and just regurgitate it back to them and be like, look, just focus on what you need to focus on. Some things is just gonna happen, and you can't control it. Just control the controllables, and get up and watch film as much as possible. That's the that's the big thing. Knowing what you need to do, knowing how you need to do it know what's coming and how to pretty much execute what you're doing at a fast pace and just keep reiterating that to them was like a big thing for me. Hey, Trey, talk, if, if you would talk a little bit about why film study is so important and maybe how long does it take players when they get to college to realize that? Um, it takes some some people longer than than others. Uh, I think Nick gets it. Uh, not all freshmen get it that that quick. Um, especially for me, I knew that uh, film study coming in was going to be uh, key to me getting out on the field as quick as I needed to, and actually knowing what I'm doing and actually playing fast. That's the that's the big thing about watching film is when you know what's coming and can know what you're doing and execute it as a, at a high level. That's that's where you get to make plays. That's where you end up in places that you need to be and know the whole defense as a whole. You're able to learn multiple positions because you know yours so well that you know what other people are doing. And uh, that comes with film study and then being able to get up there and have the discipline to want to get up there as many hours out of the day as possible. Is it fair to say that that kind of creates – instinct and in that you don't want to be thinking so much when you're out there you just want to react mm -hmm. keeping keeping the, the, the mind clear not thinking too much and it allows you to play more fluently and fast thank you trey looking at virginia tech's offense what are some of the biggest challenges that they can present to you and your defense uh they've they've run the, the, the ball pretty well they've they're gaining so many yards a game, and we just want to minimize that as much as we can because we know they're they're a heavy run team, especially running the ball with the quarterback. It, it it causes some issues and some of the, some of the coverages with him being so agile and being able to run the ball at will. So it's kind of keeping us on our toes, having us get into certain packages to to stop the run because we know. We're, they're going to run the ball. They they trust that run game so well that we know we're going to get tested in that, that aspect of the game. Anything else for Travion? Trey, does it help that you guys are coming off the game where you saw two different quarterbacks lining up in the Wildcat and adjusted to that in the second half? Can that adjustment carry over and use some of those things against Virginia Tech? Uh, I think it can. Uh, having having their, their Wildcat quarterback come in, it did make some challenges for us and cause us to adjust. But then now coming in this week, we know that it's not necessarily just a Wildcat quarterback. He, he can throw the ball as well. So it's kind of – we can carry over some things, but not everything because he can also throw the ball. All right, thanks guys. We'll be back at 3.40 with Nick Anderson.